line up your roster go yeah. to parties be the biggest fucking flirt you can be but do not let anyone fucking mm-hmm. know what your vagina yes, smells like the first semester be, be a tease absolutely and okay this is the call her daddy podcast and this guys is going to give you a look a peek into the female mind. It's gonna give you a look into how women think. We're gonna talk about reputation. I think one of the most requested, specifically from girls, is guys, I'm coming into college or I'm in college and I want to preserve my reputation. Yes. God damn it, daddy gang. (sighs) Your reputation is probably already extremely (laughs) fucked. (laughs) No, who's listening? And if you're no. anything like Alex and I, you're fucked. No, I'm just kidding. College is a huge opportunity for you to make sure you create the narrative for how you want your reputation to oh, be set. Create the narrative. Now, if okay, that's what we're gonna start with first here, guys. Remember how women think. This is get piece this together with everything you hear about red pill stuff. You're going to just see it laid out here. Um, they don't know they're doing it, obviously, but you can just break these things down. That's why I love breaking stuff like this down between uh, two women. So like they said, this is your perfect opportunity, they're, they're telling all the women, to create the narrative. And this is what we've talked about in the past, about how um, women are their own PR teams, their own public relations experts. They're, they're their own marketing experts. So again, we have the very easy, simple version of that when you watch on Instagram or online dating, the filters, uh, you got the, um, you know, the, the perfect done makeup and all that stuff, right? They're they're always going to market their best step self forward. However, on that same, you know, thing, it's not just that that's what, what we can visually see, but understand this is always going on in the back of women's mind and they're learning this stuff. They learn this stuff from Cosmos. They learn this stuff from all the magazines, not just this podcast. But again, this is a huge, very popular podcast. It just exposes that women are always thinking about the narrative that people are going to give off and how that they can play that game. This is kind of what we talk about with the female chameleon. They're always aware of these social games going on. So you always have to watch her behavior always because when she knows that her narrative, she can shape her narrative, that's why we always say never believe what she says, believe what she does. Because again, all women know this game. Guys, remember back in the day, episode two, it's called If You're a Five or a Six, You <laughs> Need to Die for, die for That, that dick. dick. This is what Alex <laughs> means, okay? Everybody listen. And listen, everyone, I don't want anyone's feelings to get this hurt. This is going to hurt feelings. This is going to rub but people the, the wrong way. But it's the fucking truth. It is. Okay. It is. If you are a hot girl, mm-hmm. do not fuck the first semester. That's the fucking truth it is first semester you need to be so careful you need to be so strategic because if you're a super hot girl Mm -hmm. and you fuck around people are gonna be like oh yeah she's hot but like she's such a slut if you are super hot and you hold out you are gonna be this prized possession that people are trying to get to the party because they want to penetrate you guys (laughs) okay guys (laughs) First off, man, I don't know if I was naive growing up, but is this just the thought that they put into all of this thing? If you're a hot girl in the first semester, don't sleep with anyone because of all all of this whole like mind games and all this, all I can say is when I went in at 18 years old to college, I was not aware of any of this stuff. I don't know if other guys were aware of this stuff. Or again, if this is just women, but again, this is why it's so funny to listen to women talk about this. They are always aware since even before college about how they're going to shape about if you're hot. And then again, they're going to describe how you figure that out uh, whole thing. But about this whole thing about, hey, you don't put out your first semester because what will happen is you will become the prized possession that every man wants to penetrate okay that was the key phrase that she said if you're a hot girl first semester you're super hot you don't want to put out because then what will happen is that whole first semester you will build up the pedestal 
that every guy will want to penetrate you. And the reason I'm saying like that is it actually makes a lot of psychological sense, which is why, you know, women do this and it works like that. But understand what she is, the underlying message that she's sending to these women. She thinks that the prize is that guys want to penetrate you. That is the prize. All of this is what they're doing, just like um, Ambition Matters talked about with like perceived value versus real value. They are using the perceived value aspect. They are, they, they're like master manipulators in that sense to be able to raise their value in all these different ways. So again, remember that these women are teaching the girls that, hey, the prize mindset, this is why all women think they're the prize, is that guys will want to penetrate you. And we all like sit back and laugh from the sidelines like, yeah, we get it. Cool. You know how easy it is if you're a woman to get men to sleep with you? There's no skill in that. Zero skill. You could get men to sleep with you anywhere you go. So us guys are like laughing, but this is how this is why women think they're the prize. And this is why when us guys are like, hey, you're the prize because of what you're bringing to the table in most cases, right? Most cases, the guys are the breadwinner. Most cases, the guys are the guys that are going to fix things around the house. They're going to bring a lot of the tools in the relationship. And again, women are thinking, hey, I'm the prize, right? I'm the prize. But the reason they're thinking that is because they're able to get men to want to penetrate them. So they're like, man, I'm such hot stuff. I'm the prize because guys want to sleep with me. And got high value men look at them. They're like, that doesn't make you the prize. What is what can you bring to my life that I couldn't already have myself? It's like, just because guys want to sleep, that doesn't make you the prize. But that's the standstill that we're at. Women think they're the prize because men sleep want to sleep with them. And men, it's like, need to understand, hey, you're the actual prize and you logically break this down because of what you actually bring to the relationship. We got ambition matters again. Lighten up the super chats. He says, a woman's social value depends on the men of the world staying blind and uninformed. The pedestal starts in your imagination. Absolutely. That's why when I did that breakdown video of that Coach Black Pill guy that broke down the wall and why women always have more value or whatever, it's like that's what I was trying to relay. That exact message was that when guys buy into this, that women have value just because you know they give sex out. And if guys literally think, oh yeah, that's such a reward, that's such a gift, and they put women on the pedestal, then this pedestal remains. Where, however, when guys become aware and they logically break it down like we do here, they sit back and they're like, wait a second, no, 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 I'm actually the prize because I just see through all your games. You're, you're just a magician making it seem like you're such a prize, but what you're actually bringing to the table is not much when we step back and logically break it down. Line up your roster, go yeah. to parties, be the biggest fucking flirt you can be, but do not let anyone fucking mm -hmm. know what your vagina yes, smells like the first semester. Be, be a tease and Absolutely. definitely flirt. Now, this is the thing. There's some good advice, guys. <laughs> this is just a recipe for disaster with our Me Too movement, with false allegations, with all of that stuff. Because again, now these women are saying, hey, by the way, even though you're not going to put out first semester if you're a hot girl, make sure you do a really good job flirting so guys get the impression that you might put out but don't actually put out. Like, just imagine that environment with all these parties and drinking and all that stuff, and you can see why it's such a murky waters right now for guys out there because of stuff like this. Flirt it up, flirt it up, you're going to be drinking, and then all of a sudden, wait a second, she sleeps with a guy. No, call her daddy girls told me I, I can't sleep with anyone first semester. Shoot. You know what? I felt like I was pressured into it. I don't want anyone to think I'm a slut. I don't want my reputation to be ruined. So you guys can see how this can lead to some really bad situations for men on the opposite end when you break this stuff down. It's going to rub people the wrong way. This is the kicker. And this we is the hate kicker. to say it. We but hate to say it. If you're not a hot girl. If you are below a seven. If you're. Yes. If you are below a seven. Mm -hmm. Fuck a little. <laughs> fuck around. <laughs> Fucker! Fuck I her think own. if. All right, guys. Again, just let's let's break down the actual logical message that's being sent. Again, in this crazy, like censored 
world where everyone's being PC and crap, I really respect that these girls don't hold back. I have a lot of respect for that part. I love, I, I don't like when people like tiptoe around and get all scared in this like censorship culture. So again, I'm gonna give them credit for that part, but think logically about the advice they're giving. If you're a below a seven, they're telling all the women, if you're above a seven, don't sleep with anyone the first semester because you wanna raise your perceived value. You want, you want all those guys to want to penetrate you. Remember, that's the goal, that's the prize for these call her daddy ladies. So if you're below a seven, you better sleep around. They're like, yeah, go ahead, go start sleeping around. You better sleep around. Now understand, again, the message that they're sending is, right, to any woman, if you don't have the looks above a seven, you're worthless other than to sleep with somebody. So you better sleep with guys or else they're not gonna wanna hang out with you. Do you guys understand that message that's being sent? This is why, this is why we're like, what does she have to bring to the table? Because these are the types of advice he's giving rather than it's like, work on all of the other characteristics, work on your personality, work on all of these other flaws you might have in your character, work on cooking and all these other skills you could do to raise your value rather than, no, no, here is the Band-Aid solution that we are left with today is if you're below a seven, you have no value, so you may as well sleep around. That's gonna be the only way that you're gonna be able to be popular. That is the advice. You are below a seven. You can be a little slutty. And this is why. Tell them. You will get the reputation of a girl that is willing to put out <laughs> And you will get invited to fucking parties because once again, guys are like, okay, I can hopefully fuck her at the end of the night. This is the fucking hard truth. Yes. Listen up, ladies. And you don't have your looks <laughs> to fall on. It's true. So <laughs> again, right? This is the hard truth is what they're telling. It's like, ladies, if you don't have your looks to fall on, you're screwed. So you have to sleep around. <laughs> This is why I related it to female dating strategies in the fact that the underlying message is horrible. <laughs> Women are not going to be happy chasing this lifestyle, especially long term. Um, hypergamy, all of that stuff, we know. We'll actually probably break that down a little bit later in this video. But <laughs> this is what women are growing up in. And the funniest part, guys, the funniest part is that women then come back around and they will bring this up. You guys don't know what it's like to be a woman with the social pressure you have. They, you get pressured every day about, you better put out or else this guy's not gonna want you because you're a prude. But if you put out too much, you're a slut. It's like, they keep bringing up all of these things. Oh man, you're gonna be judged for you know walking home the night after, after sleeping over. They, they talk about this world that women live in and they don't realize that all the people that are judging them and putting these actual things in their mind is not the patriarchy. It's other women like this podcast. These women are here this and it's like literally programming in their mind to hear, well, shoot, if I'm below a seven, I have no value. I better sleep around. If I'm above a seven, still my only value is that I'm a hot girl that they're going to want to penetrate. Like, do you see how this is the mindset? I can understand why women go, well, yeah, we're, we're talked into all this. But the thing is they blame it on the patriarchy rather than all of the people they're growing up taking advice from, which in you know today's modern wor world you see is women. Women are empowered, women, single mothers. You have women everywhere. They're the role models. They're the ones, Greta Thunberg, the, 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 the woman that's like what, like six, 16, 17 or however old she is, giving everyone advice on <laughs> climate change, the world, all these other things. I think I just heard that she was giving advice on racism and stuff like that because she's just the all-knowing um, person in the world somehow. But again, that's the funniest part. Women will blame this on the patriarchy when we can step back and be like, no, no, we see where they're getting their programming from. It's other women that are doing this to them. <laughs> You gotta kinda, this is, this is why I call her daddy. No other fucking podcast or show is gonna say this and we're just telling you the fucking truth. Mm -hmm. If you are a five or a six or a seven or below that and the guys are like, yeah, but fucking invite yes. her because at the end of the night when they want to get their dick yes. wet and they couldn't get the fucking nine that's not willing to right. put out, they're gonna be like, yo, but fucking Cassidy is willing to go right. downtown. And the thing is, is it sounds fucked up, but really, like we said, 
Know your lane. Just if <laughs> this, this. <laughs> All right. All right. So again, from the perspective of if you're the college girl that just wants to sleep around and get in all the frat parties and your goal is to get men to penetrate you, that's true advice because in that scene, right, when they are chasing the highest status men, the men that are like, eh, yeah, well, no, I'm not into her. Oh, but she puts out, right? That is the attitude. They're they're given, <laughs> it's all going to come together, guys, about the, the ruin of modern relationships. But this right here, know your lane, they say. Know your lane. If you're below a seven, if you're, you know, a five, six, seven or below, know your lane. You have to just understand where you're at and, and play the role you're given. And your role is you're kind of the not that hot girl. So you have to put out to be invited to the parties. Okay. <laughs> Which again, if you pulled a bunch of like frat guys, they would probably like say, yeah, yeah, that's true. Right. Again. So I'm not saying it's not true for the scenario. I'm just saying the overall advice is just terrible for long-term happiness but know your lane here's the problem her hypergamy won't know her lane that is the biggest thing about this is that women can be like yeah okay know your lane right and some of the comments too it's like funny girls are like oh yeah that's funny that's so true know your lane they know their lane when they're talking about going getting invited to parties and what they have to do to put out and all that stuff but the thing is Again, their hy the hypergamy inside of her that we talk about a lot doesn't understand this game that is being played right now about about like guys, these higher status men are just sleeping with these girls because they just want to sleep with her. It's just a totally different scenario than before. So she can say, I know my lane. Well, I'm just lucky to be with this hot guy that's the, you know, the captain of the football team. And the thing is, her hypergamy, though, will still go in her body will be like, I just achieved that. I got that really high status man. And then her, her hypergamy sets that as a new standard. Again, her hypergamy is always gonna go, what is the highest status man that I can attain, that I can lock down? And that is where the whole disconnect is that we talked about before about perceived reality versus, or perceived value versus true value is that these women are saying they know their lane, so they're sleeping around and giving their body away, but their hypergamy is experiencing all these different guys, so her standards keep ever increasingly. So consciously, she might think she knows her lane, but subconsciously, she doesn't see all these guys that are probably actually in her lane when she looks for marriage or something. They're just gone. She doesn't see them. So she thinks she's not being picky. She just doesn't realize subconsciously her hypergamy has eliminated all these guys that are actually probably in her realistic lane for the scenario. Don't forget, subscribe, like, comment, share the video, but definitely subscribe.